If you were to go up to me right now and ask me what my favorite game was, I would probably say, who are you and how did you get into my house? But if somehow you forced me to answer, I would say my favorite is No Man's Sky. I could sit here and just talk about it for hours, the aesthetics, the sense of scale, the music. Is it a good game? Probably not. But it must at least be okay because I've spent more time playing No Man's Sky than should be legal. Basically, I love it. And then I had a thought. Since my unhealthy obsession has pretty much made me an expert at this game, why don't I try and speedrun it? You may be wondering, how can you possibly speedrun a game like No Man's Sky? It's a sandbox survival game. That'd be like, you know, speedrunning Minecraft. Never mind, that's a terrible example. The problem is that the game is not very goal oriented. Subnautica, a somewhat similar game, has a finite endpoint to the experience, that being escaping 4546B. As for Minecraft speedruns, the Ender Dragon is a symbolic, ultimate goal, and the culmination of the general exploration and gameplay loop. And it also happens to be a giant dragon. Aside from reaching the galactic core, which makes for an impractical run and is hyper-dependent on load times, No Man's Sky has no such thing. Or does it? Here's a little history lesson. The year is 2017. It's been a year since the disastrous launch, and the game is barely starting to recover. After an incredibly confusing ARG, the 1.3 update Atlas Rises goes live. It introduces portals, multiplayer, an actual tutorial, and 30 hours of story missions. Well then, there we have it. A speedrunning goal, finish the campaign as fast as possible. So it turns out that takes like 5 hours, so let's do something else. The tutorial added in Atlas Rises, which has been revised several times, is intended to walk players through the basics, like survival, repairs, crafting, and spaceflight. About a quarter of the way through, you repair your crashed ship and are pretty much free to explore the local star system, even though you can't quite leave yet. But that's fine. We don't need to. Let me introduce to you the Station Percent speedrun category. The goal is to get from the initialization button to the nearest space station as fast as possible. The rules are as follows. Time starts when a new game is initialized right before the opening cutscene. Time ends when you leave your ship aboard a space station. No editing to save, no multiplayer, no teleporting, no cuts, no butts, and absolutely, positively, no coconuts. As of recording, the world record is held by AE Force from Canada, but let's see if I can change that. Not, not, not the Canada thing, that's fine, I mean the world record thing. Here's the thing though, in the hundreds of hours I've played No Man's Sky, I think I've only done the real tutorial maybe three or four times. So going off what I vaguely remember doing several years ago, I did a trial run, which looked something like this. Spawn in, collect a bunch of ferret, collect a bunch of dihydrogen, repair my scanner, skedaddle over to the crashed ship, button mash through the story text, slap some metal plating on the pulse drive, slap some dihydrogen jelly on the launch thrusters, refine ferrite dust into pure ferrite, locate hermetic seal, go to hermetic seal. Uh oh, did you see that? The terminal? was the wrong one. It did not give me any blueprints, it only gave me pain. How did I not notice? No idea. Next. Come back. What? Realize I'd forgotten the hermetic seal. I thought I grabbed it. Go back. Die of acute radiation poisoning. Okay, so that run was kind of a bust. So I tried again. Spawn, ferret, dihydrogen, scanner, skedaddle, mash, plating, jelly, furnace, seal. Actually grab the seal, fix the ship, locate space station, land. Much better than before. This landed us at a respectable 13 minutes and 3 seconds, putting us in 8th place out of all glitchless normal mode runs. In the entire world. On just the second attempt. That certainly sounds impressive, but it's really not. You see, this is not a very competitive speedrun category. In fact, 8th place also happens to be last place in the entire world. By an entire 3 minutes. For the time being, the goal was a sub 10 minute run, because I was not feeling confident about first place. But I kept running into some problems. First is the RNG. For those of you that weren't there or never cared in the first place, a tagline of No Man's Sky's pre-launch, and I guess kind of now, is every atom procedural. Um, actually, the proxion system doesn't work at an atomic level. Yeah, shut up, and Google's tagline is don't be evil. It's a tagline, doesn't mean it's true. Anyways, the RNG. 
A star system will have between two and six planets or moons. You're guaranteed to start on a hostile planet, but anywhere from about 200 units to over 1,000 units from your starship. It takes about five minutes to travel 1,000 units at base walking speed, so this can really make or break a speedrun. The same goes for how close the ship spawns to the Hermetic Seal, but where the planet itself is also matters. If the station is right next to the planet, all good. If I'm unlucky, the station could be up to several minutes away using the base pulse drive. With the billions and billions of possible planets that work as spawn points, every run is a gamble. And I love gambling. Let's try that again. This was the first run that didn't start me on a radioactive planet, which was a very good change of pace. Speaking of pace, the planet biome also affects your run. Toxic gases in the atmosphere can be recycled by your exosuit to increase sprint distance during acid storms. On any planet with heat storms, like the lovely Naukran Alpha, extreme conditions allow you to fly significantly further with your jetpack. This makes traversal during storms not only less dangerous, but ideal, provided I had enough sodium to charge my hazard protection. After doing initial repairs, I had to locate a shelter and a hermetic seal. To do that, I could use a chart I found in the distress beacon. During the animation to open the planetary chart, I realized I could still interact with the starship inventory, meaning I could repair the engines. This probably only shaved a few seconds off the run, which didn't matter because what the f we're already like six minutes in. I didn't know that at the time, of course, but yeah, there was no way this run could be sub-10. Things did go a little bit more smoothly after that, as the storm let me get back to my ship and up in space in no time. But things soon went wrong. Again. The station didn't show on my HUD in space because this was the tutorial after all, and the map also went offline because of an incoming transmission from Artemis who I'm pretty sure at this point in the story is 12 minutes and 47 seconds. So it turns out it wasn't actually that bad. In fact, that was the best run so far. But still, it was not good enough. I didn't have a lot of time to work on my runs, so Sub-5 was starting to look impossible, especially with all the RNG involved. So I decided that if anything, I really just needed to get Sub-10. Doing so would put me in at least 6th place, which I'd be more than happy with, but even that was looking out of reach. But then, this happened. That happened. It wasn't important. It didn't mean anything for the run. I just thought it was really funny. What was I talking about? Uh, yeah, sub-10 still seemed way out of reach. Or did it? At this point, I was feeling very pessimistic. First place looked to be impossible. And I concede. AE Force, you can keep both your record and your Canadian citizenship. In fact, as far as I can tell, sub-5 pretty much is impossible. Let me explain. For his world record run, AE4 spawned next to a trading post, a structure where players can buy and sell goods at better prices than at space stations. See all those landing pads? NPCs land on those, and players can buy an NPC's ship, provided they can either afford one or trade in a ship of equivalent value. AE Force was able to find a ship cheap enough or an NPC stupid enough to trade in the starter ship for, and was off to the space station. Because I think the odds of that are just so insanely low. But hey, you know, insanely low odds and speedrunning go hand in hand. I mean, what are the odds that I start next to a uh, trading post? Maybe like, what, 1 in 7.5 trillion? But I didn't need such an insane stroke of luck. I could still be among the fastest in the world. Perhaps even top three. If I was at least going to get top three, I had to change things up. This couldn't be in normal mode. For those of you unaware, No Man's Sky has a hardcore mode called Permadeath, for obvious reasons. Higher difficulty, and only one shot, so no messing up like before. AE Force holds the Permadeath record at 7 minutes and 55 seconds. This was a much more appealing option, but the problem was the increased difficulty. As I'm sure you've noticed, the tutorial requires a long stretch of running, usually around a kilometer between the shelter where the Hermetic Seal is and the Starship crash site. This is bad enough in a normal storm, but even worse in a permadeath one. Your suit's hazard protection drains way faster than it normally would, and it takes more resources to charge. Not to mention other obstacles, like hostile wildlife attacks, damage to suit technology, or lightning strikes, all of which happen more frequently in this mode. What kind of place is this? So, I decided to give Permadeath a shot. The first run started me off on a volcanic planet, which meant that there was plenty of carbon around. It also meant that the hotter storms would give more power to my jetpack, allowing me to move faster for longer. Out of the way, beaver boy. At first, things were looking really good. The terrain was flat, and I spawned right next to the ship. No way, if that is the, uh... 
there was even this cool structure I passed by. Remember it. This thing is very important. Do not forget. Anyways, the mission marker for the Hermetic Seal was not in the nearby building as I had hoped. It was instead 1,000 units away, and I had to get there in the middle of a firestorm. Wall of flame? Doesn't matter. We ball. Oh shit. I'm gonna die. No biggie. I'll just recharge my suit with sodium. Wrong. I forgot to grab enough sodium and my suit was basically dead the entire run. It was so bad that my only form of protection against the environment broke, and with probably only nanoseconds to spare, I made it in the shelter. But things, of course, kept getting worse. I had no resources to fix it. Oh my god, you have to be kidding me. When I tried collecting more, my mining laser ran out of fuel. Fuck. And then I just stuck my toe too far out the door. I regret to an- No! Speedrun. It's a speedrun tactic. Look where we respawn. Oh shit, this is Fermadeath. Sodium is important, and for the next run, that was a top priority. I got our SpongeBob me chugly. This run started like any other, except I was flying around like a crack-addled hummingbird looking for my next fix of sweet, sweet sodium. I ended up finding this massive patch of flowers, which contained at least one daily recommended intake of sodium. Just this one patch lasted me the entire rest of the run. I lost some time trying to refine the rusted metal into ferrite dust, but that ended up being slower than mining it. Otherwise, everything went smoothly. Let's just hope the space station is nearby and not on the other side of the system. Naturally, it was on the other side of the system. I took in the sights on the way there. Wow, that's very rare in a copper system. And landed. Ooh, but that drift though. Could this be a world record worthy run? Nah, of course not. It was 17 minutes and 21 seconds. The worst one by a long shot. But at least we survived. Where are the rocks at? And this one's mad? Oh my... Rock's got hands. Well, not really, it's got feet. And that one also ended in failure. I hope you haven't forgotten about that building, by the way. Well, that was a minor settlement. Like most buildings, it spawns with two shelters outside, one of which has a hollow archive inside, which is what that chart from earlier leads you to. Inside of this archive is where you find the Hermetic Seal. But here's what I discovered. It does not matter what hollow archive you use in the tutorial. Even if it isn't the marked one, it'll still spit out a Hermetic Seal. This meant that I can now just run to the nearest building instead of a kilometer away from the crash site, in theory saving several precious minutes of time running back and forth. After countless failed attempts and slow runs, things we're looking bad. So bad, in fact, that I'd unplugged my microphone because I wasn't planning on doing any more commentary. If you can even call it that. SpongeBob me chugly. Here's what happened. After finding my bearings and getting a map to the marked shelter, I noticed there was another one just a few hundred units the other way. And there it was. The Hermetic Seal. Because the storm was too intense, I couldn't make it back to the crash site yet, and I still had a ton of resource farming to do once I got back. But that didn't matter, since I'd saved so much time just going to the nearby shelter. After landing at the space station, this left us with a final time of just over 15 minutes and 46 seconds. That's not enough for first. That was not even enough for second. In fact, it was slower than any run ever submitted to the category. But it was my fastest time in permadeath by a long shot, and I was proud of it. So I sent in my run and waited for a response. While waiting for verification, I decided to apply my new skills in normal mode. And this time, we were gonna go fast. Compared to permadeath, my suit drained way slower and took no resources at all to top up. I barely spent any time harvesting sodium and oxygen. Doesn't matter, since all I need was just enough ferrite and dihydrogen to fix up the ship. After opening the map, I saw a shelter right behind the crash site, less than 300 units away. And so I had the seal a whole three minutes ahead of schedule. After making final repairs to the ship, I took off, making it to the station with a new personal best of... Hold on, I'm gonna back up so I don't peek my mic. Nine minutes and 17 seconds. Sixth place in the entire world. Only out of eight other runs, but it's way better than last. I was very pleased with myself. So I decided to call it a night and went to bed.
So, it turns out I forgot one of the most important rules. So that the mods can make sure you're not cheating and using the wrong settings, they ask that all submissions include the save creation screen, not just the initialization. I also happen to have a bad habit of only pressing record once I'm loading into a game because I'm super stingy about storage space. Put those two together and you have an invalid run. I tried appealing the ruling, but, you know, as the French say, it do be like that sometimes. The guy who moderated my run was super chill about it, and they even invited me to join the No Man's Sky speedrunning Discord, which is apparently a thing. As for my placement... THIRD PLACE! Because there are only two other runs! Okay, so I technically got third place, now I can slap that in the thumbnail and move on. That's it, thanks for watching, bye! We're not done yet. I'm getting first place no matter what. Remember when I said that getting to the center of the galaxy was too impractical? Then, let's do it. Here are the rules. Time starts at initialization. Time ends when the core is selected. No using the space anomaly teleporter. No using expedition rewards. No multiplayer. No, no super jetpack boost. I don't know what that means. It could be referring to this bug from two years ago that was patched after a few weeks, or it could be a misspelling of Super Monkey Ball. I'm also going to infer some other rules that aren't directly stated, like no skipping the tutorial. The page says that runs are to be played straight up without cheese. So without using cheese or glitches, this run could take a very long time. The Euclid Galaxy is nearly 1 million light years across. Yeah, so that's wrong. Um, hi, this is me in post. It actually has a radius of about 1 million light years. No one's sure how big it is, actually. Uh, just like Yo Ma- And players usually spawn around 700,000 light years away from the core. Even with a maxed out hyperdrive, this would take hundreds of jumps, which would not be suitable for a speedrun. There are other ways to get to the center. First is by using black holes. By by traveling through black holes, you can cut down on travel time significantly, at the risk of damaging your starship. This would still take a very long time, but it's better than doing it without any assistance whatsoever. Next is story missions. The last mission of the main quest line gives players the option to travel to the galactic core regardless of where they are in the galaxy. The only problem is that the storyline takes a very long time, and it'd still probably be rejected from this category because there's another one specifically for the campaign missions. Finally are portals. Portals, not teleporters, and there's an important difference. Using ancient glyphs and a bunch of materials, you can activate a portal that can be used to travel to any planet in the galaxy, provided you've unlocked all the glyphs in its unique sequence. For practical reasons, I'll stick to using portals. This means accessing a late game mechanic without completing the first story mission, which is about as complicated as it sounds. It also means collecting a lot of resources, it would take forever to explain what needs to be collected, when it needs to be collected, how it needs to be collected, and why it needs to be collected. Instead, I've put together a simple shopping list for your viewing pleasure. 375 chromatic metal, 137,500 units, 1,100 nanites, 5 warp cells, crafting and survival resources, enough of these resources left over to charge a portal including but not limited to 64 carbon, 64 cobalt, 32 sodium, 64 copper, all at the bare minimum. I'll probably need way more. In this run, RNG is going to be an even bigger issue. The world record in permadeath is just under an hour, and it was only possible due to the runner's skill and some very fortunate RNG. For example, one way to find glyphs is by talking to NPC travelers who will lead you to their grave. There's a very rare chance that they spawn on space stations or at planetary installations. Hell FAF, who holds the world record, found one on just the third station they visited. Look at how excited they are. I plan on doing this in normal mode, but that doesn't really change the RNG. With that in mind, let's go through what needs to get done. Repair the ship. When on the starting planet, collect as many resources as possible. Ferrite dust, carbon, dihydrogen, the local wildlife, anything that isn't bolted down. And then take the stuff that is bolted down. Go to the space station and sell all the junk that isn't needed and buy components and materials. And then steal everything you can. Set up a base and follow the story missions. Refine as much carbon and ferrite as possible and try and make some more money. Unlock blueprints for the hyperdrive, keep following the story, and collect nanites. Buy hyperdrive upgrades at the space station. Keep following the story, unlock warp cell blueprints. Find a traveler, a glyph, a monolith, and a portal, and while you're at it, consider finding a lion, a witch, and or a wardrobe. Activate the portal and input the first glyph as many times as possible. This should take you to a star system only about 5,000 light years from the core. Once on the other side, travel to the core and jump through. Now that we've got that taken care of, here's how the first run went. Okay, so here's the plan. Ooh, expedition. New expedition coming soon. No way. What was I saying? Right. Okay, the plan. Um, basically, I don't have like any notes or anything with me. I'm going to go in blind 
this time. I f just figure it out, see what I can do, you know. Hopefully it takes less than a day. I spent like a solid two hours earlier today trying to get OBS to work. And so I think I fixed it, except now the file sizes are absolutely massive. So I'll spend as little time uh, dilly-dallying and hop to it. Haha, <laughs> hop to it. That's a frog joke. That's, uh, that's plenty of ferrite dust, but uh, we can always use some more. I'm a bit of a bit of a dusty guy. I'm doing this for a reason. Well, that's kind of phallic. Yeah, I, I think I'm too far away from anything to do the uh, to do that thingy earlier. Not earlier. It'll be earlier for whoever's watching, but. It's that was like a month ago for me. Hello, Wheatley. Been at this for 30 minutes already. About 24 carbon. Uh, and by absolutely not doing any maths, uh, I can gauge. Oh, that's a weird-looking dinosaur over there. Why is that man so small? Oh my goodness. He's just far away. I'm, a, I'm an idiot. I'm s oh my god. There's a first time for everything, and this is the first time that anyone has screwed up the speedrun this bad. Oh, they spawn underground now. I'm just stealing your children. What are you so mad about? <laughs> Perfect. Bet you didn't know you could do that the other way. Now watch me do it both ways at the same time. And, and then in post I'm just gonna like it, make it so that, I don't know, I just do it twice. Oh my god, it's so green in here. <laughs> the Hulk station. The WhatsApp station. The weed station. <gasps> Let's go! Is it bless the maker and his water, or bless the maker and his spice? I don't know. Uh, like, completely unrelated from what I've been doing for the past hour. But they didn't really do anything in the movie, they just kind of like, like, de <laughs> dehydrated him. Oh, I forgot about something. Now that's lucky. The chances of that are like, one in 7.5. I'm gonna buy a Gek Relic. Anyways, if I don't screw up the uh, Monument Riddle, it's gonna give me a chance to find a portal, but only if I have a Gek Relic. I did not have one. Yo, look at the crab. Okay, I've done this one before. I don't remember what it says, I just think that was the right answer. Oh, that's... that's a good feeling. No, I'm not getting involved. Music kind of goes hard though, but I'm out of here. I can't outrun pirates in this ship, that sucks. Okay, that's it, that's a gateway. There we go. And that's like... Uh... An hour 33. It was like an hour 33 minutes and 4 seconds. My professional opinion is that this was an okay run. I mean, it was good for a first attempt, but it could really be improved upon. First, I think I spent way too long buying things. This was especially during my first trip to the space station, and then again when I was charging the portal. I refused to mine copper at first, thinking it'd take too long. No one sold it at the space station, so I ended up having to mine it anyways. Honestly, game, I do not care how much I've walked. I just want to buy some copper. Aya Nasir. It's him. <laughs> Altogether, my space station shopping spree cost me less than 10 minutes overall, but it could easily have been cut down. Second, I think I took way too long fighting those pirates. It's a guaranteed encounter, so there's no avoiding it. 
Instead, I have to either fight my way through or divert power to engines and book it to the nearest space station. The run measures up kind of well against the permadeath ones, and it would have lodged itself firmly between second and third place, which really isn't a fair comparison since permadeath runs take longer on average. But this wasn't a permadeath run, this was normal difficulty. Do you want to know where that puts us? First place! It actually happened! Kind of, it kind of happened. I mean, yes, this run was submitted and approved and is, at time of recording, the fastest time in the world for a Galaxy Center speedrun, in normal mode. But in case you haven't noticed a very obvious pattern throughout the video, the only reason that this is first place on the leaderboard is because it's the only one on the leaderboard. So is it really fair to say that I'm now one of the greatest No Man's Sky speedrunners in the world? No, it's not, but I will anyways. But I don't want to leave this as a one-and-done victory, I really want to improve my time. And so, I got back to it. This next run started me off on planet Ivan. This is a good spawn. Also, it's like a planet with a normal ass name. A quirk that icy planets have is that they occasionally grow tiny plants that yield a lot of carbon. This meant that I could collect a metric buttload of car- I'm not saying that. This really cut down on the amount of time I spent collecting carbon. After grabbing the hermetic seal, I misjudged a very obvious ravine on my way back to the ship and got stuck, but I was soon back up in space. After unlocking the terrain manipulator, I collected plenty of copper to avoid last time's mistakes, and set up my base. When it came time to find the hyperdrive blueprints, I ended up going to the wrong crashed freighter since there were two identical wrecks right next to each other. Wait, what? It's the, it's the wrong wreck? That wasn't a huge deal, because just a few hundred meters away was a traveler grave just sitting there. Oh my god. Jokes aside, this is insanely lucky and could cut down so much time on the speedrun. So after building the hyperdrive and collecting the glyph, I was back in space and my recording software crashed. This was the luckiest run I'd ever had and probably one of the luckiest runs anyone's ever had. A good start, good trades, and a lucky grave spawn. Okay, so I'll just try again. Again. Good spawn, good money, got through the portal, and everything went smoothly. Except for one teensy little thing. Chromatic metal is about the most important resource in the game, but I didn't have enough nor did I have enough hyperdrive upgrades. This meant that I was not only unable to craft enough warp fuel, but my hyperdrive was inefficient and had a really short range. So with each successive warp, I checked the station in hopes of finding chromatic metal and upgrades. This let me dodge the pirates, but took a lot of time. I finally found some chromatic metal and a warp upgrade, then I got lost somewhere near the core, and I made it through with a final time of... An hour, 21 minutes, and 3 seconds. And now that is a damn good time. In fact, we're still in first place despite all that fierce competition. So, where does that leave us? First place, obviously, I've been very clear about that. But like, in general, uh, I've learned a few things. And I've grown as a person. <laughs> well, I've learned a few things. Speedrunning is fun. Not particularly easy, but it is fun. I got to take a more competitive look at my favorite game, which was kinda weird, but it was nice to see it from a different perspective. I learned that you can play No Man's Sky any way you really want to. So I leave you with this, dear viewer. I want you to go beat my time, it really shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, go nuts, have fun. Alright, that's it, bye. But wait, before I go, a few things first. Uh, like the video and subscribe, please? Just kidding, you don't have to do that. Only do it if you want to, but you really want to. So I took so long to get this video out that AE4 set a new record time, this time bringing it down to 3 minutes and 42 seconds. Good luck beating that. I'd also like to apologize for the delay. Stuff came up IRL, like a lot of stuff, so I had to put my hobbies aside. Yeah, I do YouTube for fun. Uh, I can promise that future videos will have a more coherent schedule. I'm looking to organize it more instead by planetary alignment and ferret populations in Wisconsin, um, so that should really help out with streamlining the whole thing. Now that's it.